This is the Roaring Elephant podcast, and as I've just heard from Dave, we're going to give it a try today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give the energy a try. Uh, I'm very tired. Yeah, that's what you get to record on a Friday, the end of the week. It's a tough time to be here. It's, it's beautiful weather outside, storm is approaching, so maybe we'll find some lightning in the episode as well. But go ahead. I was just going to say, but, but it's Friday and everything is better on Fridays. Even storms. Which is not a good thing. <laughs> uh, I mean, if 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 you float away during the recording of the podcast, I will salute and uh, see you later. Oh, well, <laughs> I am in the Netherlands. I'm like three meters be below sea level at the moment, and I'm on the first floor, so it's a distinct possibility. But that's just part of living mm. in this beautiful country, I guess. But anyway, that being said, today we're going to talk about something that. Um, it's getting more and more interesting, I guess, because in the olden days when I started my career, it was kind of normal to stay in the same job for like a decade or more. Well, these days people change jobs a lot and definitely with the COVID epidemic, the whole brain, not the brain drain, but what was it called again? The big... Um, the, the big resignation, the big resignation or... yeah, and a couple of hype words yeah. coming out there, but apparently people mm. are moving jobs a lot. And um, well, Dave and I, both from our own little point of view, Dave as being a uh, hiring manager, is that a correct term for it? Yeah, sure. And me being a, a simple foot soldier in the trenches who does occasionally mentor new people who come into the company. Uh, we thought maybe we should talk about that a little bit. Indeed, but before we do oh, that, before. let's just do a let's just do a quick plug. Um, I had the pleasure of presenting at a global pre-sales conference uh, earlier on this week, uh, which uh, just wrapped up yesterday, uh, called Demo Fest, and it's it's a conference purely focused around solutions engineering, sales engineering, pre-sales. Call it what you like. Um, loads of interesting sessions, one of which delivered by me. And uh, as you can see on the screen, if you're looking at this on YouTube, uh, it was around what I believe at least are the key tenants of successful pre-sales leadership. So if you're interested in hearing yet more of this uh, melodious rambling voice, um, feel free to follow the links in the show notes and uh, hit register for demo fest and you'll be able to uh, listen to my session uh, afterwards so if if the topic sounds interesting or if you just can't get enough uh, then uh, yeah go ahead have a listen and see what you think and any feedback or thoughts that you have you know please do reach out via the uh, the contact us form on the website ping me directly on linkedin send me a smoke signal carry a pigeon whatever you like uh, don't send the carrier pigeons he just cooks and eats them <laughs> maybe maybe pigeons tasty mm -mm -mm. flying rat <laughs> he's from the uk people <laughs> <laughs> hey we eat all sorts of things over here cool anyway <laughs> Back to regular pros okay, that's, that's ever so slightly broken yon that early in the episode oh we're doing so well Yes, I'm leaving it up to you now. I'm kind of going to sit in my corner and just <laughs> nod a lot. All right. So we're talking about uh, career paths. As Jan mentioned, I, this is something that has evolved um, quite a lot over time and seems to be continuing to accelerate. Now, in terms of, of career paths, uh, I myself you know, spent... Uh, over 10 years in a completely different um, space. I, I started my my working life in mechanical engineering um, in the aerospace industry. And I spent 10 years in that, uh, over 10 years in that at Rolls-Royce military aero engines. And that was, I, that was what, I, what I thought I was going to do for the rest of my, uh, the rest of my time, certainly early on. And as I sort of, as I grew older, as I sort of got exposed to more technologies and, and, you know, more opportunities, I found that, you know, that maybe the, the engineering part of that particular career was not as interesting to me as I thought it was going to be. 
and uh, but I actually found some of the technology that I was using or playing with at the time actually pretty interesting and that's what spurred me off on a on a completely different direction and sort of yeah 20 plus years of uh, of, of work later in the in the tech and, and IT industry mm -hmm. and does this mean that I would have to divulge a little bit about my career choices in the past or how I started out I think that might be useful. Well, I'm not sure if it's useful. It's kind of funny, though, because I've always been in the IT <laughs> environment. I've spent my first years really in what was called the EDP, the Electronic Data Processing Department, which was well, what IT was called in those days. Hmm. The reason I started in that is because uh, at the end of your uh, schooling, the end of your uh, school career, if you can call it that, you typically get kind of uh, career advice. And my advice was pretty much, you can't do anything, so just go into IT, that's easy. <laughs> I still appreciate the advice because it worked out very well. <laughs> we'll just kind of show how different the ages are. So I don't remember exactly what my career advice was from school. I do remember that it was useless, though. Um, but I, you know, when I left school, I I thought I wanted to get into um, like design, sort of, um, but more like engineering design. So drafting um, um, sort of computer aid design maybe although I didn't really know a great deal about that back in the day and it was still very early times for that sort of stuff but uh, yeah it was the the journey I think was that was kind of interesting was that one thing at least for me one thing led to another and that's one of the things that I think has been pretty consistent on my uh my career path at least, uh, is that while I might not have known what my next step was going to be or my next, the next part of my journey or that sort of thing, like it, it all felt like a fairly natural progression. Even the, the change between going, uh, having, you know, a focus more on the engineering side through to the, the IT side, you know, I drifted um, during my time in, in engineering more and more towards the, the technology side of things. And it just at that point felt like a bit of a natural progression. Yeah. It's something we're probably going to talk more about in the rest of the episode. If how you, how you look at this, because for me as well, uh, even though I wouldn't say drifted, it's more like things piqued my interest and caused me to mm. move, but I never really yeah. had a, a 10, 20 year plan of this is where I want to be. Is that a good thing, a bad thing? I guess we can't get back at that uh, during the episode. Yeah, I mean, the, I think the the sort of the key probably next piece is like why you know, why change at all? And I think you've you've actually just hit the nail on the head right out the gate because it's it's what piques your interest. Like the you're going to spend a significant portion of your life working in, in the majority of cases, unless you sort of happen across a, a giant lottery win or something else like that. Um, like, so we all, uh, I think we've both always focused on doing what we're interested in, doing what um, kind of gives us a bit of, uh, a bit of drive, a bit of interest, um, you know, fires off some a bit of curiosity in our brain and, you know, hopefully pays the bills and all that side of things as well. But the, the reasons to, you know, make a change or start evolving your career in one direction or another are usually because you come across something that you think is, oh, this is actually more interesting than mm. what I'm doing at the moment. It's slightly different for me. Because hmm. for me, it's more like, uh, okay, I, I got a job, I'm doing a thing, I'm doing it good because apparently my boss likes me, so that's fine. But then something comes around. For example, when the whole uh, hypervisor thing, the virtual machine craze started, I just built an Xen server back at home and I played around with that stuff. And I went to do forums, I went to do, uh, I mean, writing blogs wasn't something you did a lot in those days. Uh, but I just yep. got interested, I got to know people, and then, I guess, coincidentally, job openings happened where that knowledge became important, became useful. And since I had that knowledge a little bit, and was a little bit ahead of the curve, perhaps, at least in this part of the world, I was able to mm -hmm. flow into that job that way. So for me, it isn't really that I see a job uh, posting somewhere, I think, oh, that's cool, I want to get in there. It's more like I've already kind of 
moved a little bit my main thing. I'm still doing my job. I'm still doing whatever I'm doing. I mean, when I, when I started looking at virtualization, um, I was actually in customer support at that point in uh, post sales for Silicon Graphics. Mm. And uh, virtualization was something that was done in HPC in those days, but Xen was happening and it was kind of fun. KVM yeah. was uh, the first steps there, but Xen was really better at the, in, in those days. Not entirely sure what it is today anymore. Um, but basically, I just started playing around with that stuff. And by coincidence, I kind of moved into a, a role as a DevOps engineer for a company or an organization, I should say, uh, that wanted to create a public cloud. Yeah. Cool. I think we're both saying the same thing. Like, I don't think that it's, I don't think many people necessarily see a new job posting and go, ooh, I'll go and completely change direction. I think it's people find something. I think some people may do that, but I think more often than not, if you're doing, if you've got a career, a change in your career path, you come across, like as you explained, that you come across a technology or a a something in your life that you get interested in. And then I think it, probably easiest way to describe it, you, you look for a way to scratch that itch. You look for a way Not where even, it just you can, happens. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, but that's, that's, I think, the the organic nature of a lot of these changes. I think that you you said sort of you asked a question earlier on like is it a a bad thing not to have like a 10 mm -hmm. 20 year like career plan like i would say it's it especially in in the the world we live in today yeah. like if you create like a 10 or 20 year career plan like you're insane like i i couldn't possibly predict you know certainly not accurately at least <laughs> i'm sure i could predict but i would uh, i would I would uh, I would doubt its ver its uh, veracity. Uh, like, what on earth will things will look like, like ten, twenty years from now in terms of career options, where things are going, like the direction, the opportunities that might be available? Just you know, yeah. would be. I, I got two points to disprove that. Uh, is this proof the right mm. word? I don't think so. But I mean, it kind of depends because we're also looking at this at the IT world. And the IT world is going so fast and doing, knowing what you're going to do next year, I have no idea. But this is very specific for the technology world. I mean, if you're in finance or something like that, I, I don't know. I am not in finance, but I have a vision, an idea that there's a lot less flexibility. Uh, it's just a career path moving up in this chain of hierarchy. And there's a lot less going left or right in things in that or in manufacturing, not engineering. Engineering is also, of course, very a technology point of a uh, technology thing. But we're kind of in a luxury position of being in an industry where it's, it's not only allowed but encouraged to have interests and to grow your interests over time. And I think you brought up an interesting mm. point is that we're also in an industry that is continuously reinventing itself and coming up with new, like completely groundbreaking approaches to things. Like some of those groundbreaking things are actually things that were done many years ago, but they've been given a fresh new coat of paint. <laughs> Sometimes that's what it needs. I mean, that's what it yeah. works. And I also think that a lot of people in the IT industry, we kind of underestimate the the, the the actual importance of that thing because to be able to work in this industry you have to have a kind of flexibility of mind to be able to be creative and f move on to new things there are a yeah. lot of people and again i'm involved i'm now a senior person as an sa uh, at my current company so i am involved in recruitment uh, panels as well and some people you can just see from their resume they learned one thing they do one thing and they keep doing the same thing and Yes, sorry, typically, sorry people, but typically those people I'm not going to give an approval on because they won't stay. People, those people just stay for a month, pa panic, total chaos and leave. And it's not good for them or us to, to hire those people yeah. at that point. And I always, the people that we do hire, then the good, the good, the good people, sorry, good, bad people, <laughs> not going there, <laughs> but the people that we do uh, like, well, it's actually something that people very much underestimate the, the actual importance, the, the value it brings to have that kind of flexible mind to be able to do this. I mean, you, you mentioned uh, an interesting point. Like what if, what if a change that someone makes, um, you know, ends up being the wrong change? Like 
is that the end? Is is there? Is it should they immediately commit Harry Carey and there's there's no other options? Well, obviously, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but, but you're moving one further. I had two exceptions on your uh, rule of planning. And the second mm -hmm. one is a very short one is some people just go for, I want to end up a CEO and I don't care what I'm doing. Yeah. Now, I dislike that kind of person with a strong emotion, <laughs> um, <laughs> but there's a lot of them out there as well. I I mean, I, I, d I think that that is different to the, the sort of the plan that I was talking about and yeah, but that's a very distinct plan, right? Uh, yeah. I have, well, I have met people that have, I want to be junior today, in one year time I want to be senior, then I want to be principal, and then I'm going to be CTO, and I'll be that. And that's their 10-year plan. And if anything deviates, they move to another company. Yeah, well, that's a little bit simplistic. I, I do, I don't mind if people have a desire, and no, don't mind. I don't um, hold it against someone if they have a desire to, you know, become a CTO sure. or a or a CIO nope. or whatever. Totally like if that's their, if that's what they want to do, if that's where they see themselves heading, then great. Like there are multiple ways to do that. Um, you may not be able to do that within the the same company, but hopefully you can you can build up the experience and the tools and the uh, the knowledge that will get you there eventually. I, I think mm -hmm. the the thing that you're talking about is potentially the unrealistic expectations of mm, I'm just going to roll not unrealistic, but aggressively through all of these things and get to CTO in. No, it's more having that desire to, totally devoid of the industry or the, 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 the ecosystem you want to work in. You need to have some affinity with what you're doing. I mean, I can't imagine being a, a CEO of, of, of a bank. I would die inside. I mean, I have nothing with finance. I, I don't, it's not interesting. It's, I don't see any, it has no life for me. And just mm. saying, oh, I can become a CTO, but I have to move to a bank. I would say no. Well, I don't want to manage it in the first place, but apart from that, mm -hmm. but there are people who are just looking for their next pay grade upgrade, I guess. Totally, I don't care. Oh, we're going to crypto today and next week we'll go into call centers, whatever. There's those career management people that just go from left to right and that's, yeah, uh, that's but I then like. I think that 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 starts to show up on like on people's LinkedIn yeah. profiles. Like you can see when people have have hopped, skipped, and jumped a bunch of times, yeah. and you can maybe think that you can change that by giving them such an amazing experience that uh, that they'll want to stay but i don't really i don't believe that i don't believe that that's true i think some if you see someone that's moved a lot and you can to their credit most people that you're talking about that have this career management career direction aspiration are pretty open about it like yeah. they don't no. hide no. it like they're happy to say, like this is my this is my journey that I'm that I'm on at the moment. This is the route that I'm taking. Um, but yeah, it's it's not. I certainly as a hiring manager, like I don't I don't hire people that are just looking nope. for the next hop along the road. Yeah. I hire people that I hope are going to grow within the organisation yeah. and find a path for themselves within the organisation and going to stay for a good long. Uh, a good long time you, you can see like a giant glowing symbol in the background here if you're watching on youtube like this is the the recognition that i've been at my current gig for over three years now and like to see a number of people that i've also like recruited over time also start to see some of these glowing symbols popping up like is is cool because yeah. it's a recognition that the the people that you brought on board are happy and continuing to grow and continue to develop and still enjoying what they're doing and to to bring someone on board that is just looking at uh, <laughs> at the position as a stepping stone not really beneficial for for the employer yeah. i mean retention is no go at that point because the moment they find something yeah. better the next step up they're gone whatever you do yeah and yeah i mean in the last couple of years, I've actually had one uh, person I mentored who quit after a month because he got a better job offer. 
mm. which uh, I think we'll we'll come we'll come to that a little bit later in the in the discussion. I yeah. think so. So yeah. we're uh, we're running a little long here, um, and we've only covered a few points. So I think it is probably time to wrap this one up, and we will continue the uh, the winding career path journey in our next episode. Yeah, for me, a little summary I want to add at this point is that all the stuff we're talking about, it's all things that end up on your resume and hiring people, both the managers and the people doing the panels and the interviews, they look at that. And the choices yeah. you make say something about you and you can't hide stuff on your resume. If you leave a gap of five years, you're going to get questions about it, of course. So the, for me, the idea behind this, uh, well, there's going to be a series of episodes now, is more mm. to kind of, talk about how you can have a good career path that can actually accelerate your career in the end and not hinder even the past uh, in, in the yeah. future, sorry. And like the, the other thing I would say is that um, a lot of hiring managers will, will listen to your thoughts and your, you know, will ask you questions and we'll listen to your answers around you know if you've had a few spots of a few kind of jumps in your career um it's not a an, an immediate no i would never hire someone that's hopped around nope. a few times that's an explanation um, exactly Things happen. but like yeah but the explanation needs to feel genuine needs to be realistic and needs to kind of all line up and make sense so with that, I think unless you've got anything else... I've got a lot more, but as you said, that's going to be for next time. Indeed. So that is all the time we have today. You can support this podcast by becoming a patron. Every contribution really does help. We are, as I've said earlier, on YouTube. You can like, you can subscribe, you can comment, you can hit the notification bell and do all the YouTube things. Please go to www.roaringelephant.org for a link to our Patreon page and for more information about the podcast. You can follow us on Twitter using the at Roaring Elephant tag and you can send your feedback if you're that way inclined to podcast at roaringelephant.org. Until next time, my name is... Ooh, I hadn't thought about this one. <laughs> Career Guru Dave, how about that? Okay, and my name is, I'm just trying what's, and see what sticks on the wall, Jon. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, and we look forward to talking to you next week. Bye. See you then.